Hello friends, Coolio here and welcome back to the channel. Today guys, I want to bring you my top tips for brand new players jumping into the game. Now this is going to be a beginner's tips and tricks video and this isn't necessarily something that's going to like turn you into a pro, but what I want to do is actually go through and either remind you guys of certain things about the game or kind of go through and explain certain things that the game doesn't necessarily tell you right up front. Now a lot of the tips and tricks I'm going to be sharing in this video are things that if you've been a player that's been playing the game since Global Launch or even the, you know, the Japanese version of the game, you probably already know a lot of this information. Again, this is a video for beginners uh, because I've seen a lot of people kind of posting on the channel like tips on building characters or certain mechanics that the game doesn't necessarily explain. And so that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. So if you guys enjoy this video want to see more videos like this of World Flipper, then let me know down below in the comments. Also, I'd really appreciate it if you guys could leave a like and if you're new here to subscribe to the channel. So let's go ahead and the first thing I actually want to talk about isn't necessarily a tip. It's more of a little bit of a reminder, but there's actually a beginner's guide in the game called Stella's World Flippers. 101. Now this thing is actually extremely useful and I do highly recommend it if you're a new player in the game to just go through and read through all these different chapters. It explains a lot of the little mechanics here and there and how exactly they work in the game. It's not necessarily a tip or a trick, but it's just something I want to remind players. Even if you've been a veteran player and you've been playing this game for a while, maybe go through and read all of these just to double check to make sure you understand certain mechanics that the game actually offers. Now, the first thing I actually want to talk, the first like official tr uh, tip I want to get into actually has to deal with armaments. Now, they actually released this for Chapter 12 to kind of explain what the armaments are, but I'm going to kind of go through and explain it for new players as well. So, the armaments in the game, not actually not the armaments, the ability cores. Now, each of these ar armaments in the game actually has an ability core associated with it. Now, in order to get these ability cores, you either have to melt down an armament or you have to awaken an armament. Now, when you do this, you'll get an ability core that is the basic version of that specific armaments uh, weapon. So, for example, this one says every time one unit of a different element is or are added to the party, plus 10% to the skill damage for this unit with a maximum of 60%. However, the max version of this goes up to 120% with an additional plus 20% to skill damage for this unit in increments like that. Now, when you get the ability core for this, it's going to give you the basic version. Now, every single time you go through and actually uh, awaken an armament, you'll get one ability core. So, that, which means you can basically get four ability cores if you go through and max out an armament. So, awakening result, the armament glows. Its new level of awakening is level two and I'm going to get an ability core. So you crafted Collidal Drop Pendant Core times one. Now the thing is, is with these ability cores, you can actually go and equip them onto your character to basically give them a little bit more of an enhancement. So for example, if I wanted to say, if we go ahead and take this character, I actually believe I already have an ability core equipped onto him for power flip damage, you can see right here. I can actually go through and swap this if I want. It does take a little bit of resources, not a lot, in order to swap them. Uh, but this one is a Collidal Drop Bracelet Core. When this unit is a main unit, every time one unit of a different element is or are added to the party, plus 5% to the power flip damage, max uh, 30%. When this unit is a main unit, plus 10% to the attack for this, uh, uh, to the attack for the leader. Now the thing is, is these ability cores will only work if the character is a main unit. It won't work if the character is a secondary unit. So if you actually go and take a look at the edits for your characters or for the full team, you can actually see which ability core is currently activated for that specific team. So you can see right here, I've actually got one equipped to uh, Marina, my main character in the game, to overall enhance the, uh, you know, her power flip damage. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about, which is another thing that the game does not necessarily explain, is how skills work in this game, specifically skill cooldowns or how long it takes to actually upgrade a care or how long it takes to actually activate somebody's skills. So for example, we're gonna go ahead and take this character. She has what's known as a skill gauge of 700, which means it takes her longer to activate her ability than it does for any other character in the game. However, if I wanted to, I could make her my main unit and then for her secondary unit, if I were to go ahead and equip this character, this is Gillisrad, he actually has one of the lowest skill gauges in the game. If I combine the two of them together, it'll actually average out that skill gauge, which will significantly lower how long it takes for her to activate her ability. So when you're going through and you're building your teams, take note of the skill gauge of each of the characters and the average that you're going to get between those two characters to see how long or how frequent you're actually going to be able to activate each of their skills. This is a huge thing, because like I said, hers takes 700, which is one of the highest skill gauges in the game. 
His takes 290. If I combine them together, it actually makes her ability activate a lot faster than it originally would in the game. It's, it's fantastic. It's something that I think a lot of people kind of miss out on when they're building their teams. They just assume if I combine these two characters together, their skills work perfectly. But just keep keep in mind what their skill gauges is, because if they have a really high skill gauge, it's going to take you a lot longer in order to even activate their abilities. Now, the next thing I want to talk about actually has to deal with the mana board. It's not really like the biggest tip or trick, but when you're starting out in the game, you're going to notice that you're not going to have a lot of resources. And so you're going to be like deciding, oh, where do I want to put my resources? Where do I want to spend my, uh, my items in order to upgrade this character? So you can see right here, I actually have two that I can actually upgrade right here which is just like a basic weapon icon. This is an ability enhancement weapon, which specifically targets overall attack damage. So the sword icon usually deals with attack damage. If you see this one where it's kind of like the two flippers, that deals with power flip damage. And if you see a star icon that actually deals with overall skill damage and so forth from there. So when you're actually going through and taking a look at the character's mana board, pay attention to their overall like skill icon or the icon of that specific board that you want to unlock to give you a kind of a general idea of where you want to go through and spend your resources. Because for example, for me, I'm actually not going to go and spend my resources on these ones. I want to save my resources for the power flip damage because the current build I'm working on or using this character for is a power flip build team. And so this is more specifically towards beginner players where you're kind of going through and you don't have a whole lot of resources. It'll give you a general idea of where to place your, uh, your resources without having to go through and click every single individual icon. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about actually has to deal a little bit more with team building. And this is another thing that the game doesn't necessarily explain right up front, but it has to deal with um, how your character's power flip ability actually works. Because you'll notice as you're going through and you're activating the power flip ability for certain characters, there's different ways that they work. And it all it's all determined based off of the class of the character. So. If your leader character is a warrior, like Alk is right here, is a warrior based character, they'll do a spin attack. Now, the higher the level of power flip damage, the wider range that power flip spin attack will be. Now, if the character happens to be a ranged based character, the ranged based characters will actually shoot out a beam. And the higher level the power flip is, the more beams will shoot out, which is actually very, very useful when you're going up against bosses that have uh, that activate their abilities quite frequently and have multiple soft hit or weak hit areas that you need to hit in order to stop them or to stun them. Now for a support character like Bianca, her power flip ability, what it actually does is it activates, I believe the float mechanic. It also activates the pierce mechanic and gives an attack bonus up uh, for all of your characters. So you'll notice if you have a support character in, as your main unit, your main leader, your characters are gonna kind of fly all over the field one after the other and um, basically, yeah, you'll see it, you'll see it. They're flying all over the field, they're doing increased damage, they're flying through enemies rather than hitting them. So that's what support-based characters do. Now, for a bruiser-based character class, this one deals a significant amount of damage to the first enemy hit. Now, that is not good if you're going up against bosses that like to summon lots of little mini, you know, minions and stuff all over the field, because if you hit a minion, you're, you've basically just wasted your power flip. But if you're going up against a single target boss, like a really heavy one that's like right there in front of you, if you can target and hit the power flip directly on them, it'll deal significantly more damage as a one hit overall attack. And then the last one I want to talk about, um, I believe there's, there is one more, and I'm trying to remember what it's called. I know the dead eye is the one I talked about. That's the one that shoots like the beams out. Um, and then the special one. The special one is a little bit different because how it basically works is when it hits an enemy, it deals sort of an AOE burst attack to enemies nearby. And I believe how that works as well is the higher the power flip damage, the more damage it does, as well as the wider the overall AOE effect hits. If I'm, if I'm correct on that, um, I'm pretty sure that's how that works. I usually don't use special units because a lot of the special class units that you can use as like secondaries to kind of give overall like buffs and stuff to your team and stuff like that. But that's the power flip. That's how all of those work. And then for my last and final one, when you're going through and you're doing your team buildings and you're trying to figure out how often like certain attacks and stuff work or like how often like skills will activate or which characters and stuff have, um, uh, which characters uh, abilities will go off first or like if you like the power flip ability of your leader, if you want to kind of swap it or you don't like the armament or the core equipped to a certain character. What I recommend is using the practice mode. 
and you can use this to go up against a variety of different bosses that basically have like infinite life I, I believe there might be a chance to take them down they just have like a ridiculous amount of life but I do recommend actually going through and testing out your builds on these it's just a really really useful way to do it without spending any of your stamina now actually I do have a little bit of a bonus tip this is something to help out new players as well if they want to try to rank up as fast as possible because you're going to know you don't have an unlimited amount of stamina in the game um, whenever you see the icon up here at the top left that activates that means somebody's requesting for a backup it's something you've probably seen multiple times um, if they're going up against a boss you've probably participated in it but the thing is is when you go and you're a backup for somebody else if you're a guest for somebody else's boss battle you actually don't consume any stamina it's a fantastic way to extend your gameplay sessions as well as you get a significant boost to rank experience for your characters or rank points it's a fantastic way to level up your account as fast as possible without spending any of your stamina and being able to use your stamina for things like going through the main storyline or doing kaleidoscope quests and stuff like that so that's for my uh my final tip so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and again if you guys want to see more videos on world flipper then let me know down below in the comments if you enjoyed this video if you've learned something new then please leave a like and if you're brand new to the channel consider subscribing well friends my name's coolio and i'll see you next time